So I'd love to start because this, you know, the, 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 this documentary has been made recently. This has happened. This is now. This is now. And I think that the nowness of of this, the nowness of what you're experiencing as Americans, what I'm experiencing as a British person, we are awake now. We're wide awake, and there is an interconnect. There is an intersectionality, interconnectedness that we are seeing in evidence here, which shows that everything that we do can matter and will matter. And I'd love to ask, um, maybe Jane, it would be lovely if you could answer first. We want to hear your voice. And tell us, how does it feel to be at the City of Joy now? What's happening right now? What's happening? Can you tell us? Mi nasikia kukua kustede la joa, ni kondani ya jamaa. I feel, at City of Joy, I feel uh, in a family. Juu si kukua na jamaa hata kidogo. I didn't have a family at all. Jamaa ika nitupa. They rejected me. Lakini sani liejikuta ndani ya stede la joa. But when I arrived there, nika kuta mama Christine. She met nika mama kuta Christine. Nika kuta mama Eve. Mama Eve. Nikaskia ra sana. Very, very happy. Nikakuta Dr. Mkwege. Met Dr. Mkwege. Nikajikuta niko ndani ya jamaa minazaliwa upia. I was reborn having a new family. Sababu kwetu Kongo. Because in Congo. Ukipata shida ya ubakaji. When you are raped. Jamaa inakutupa. Uh, you don't have family anymore. Bana kukumu kama we njo mwenyo ulitaka, japo kuwa haiko we, bana kuona saa nyama. They see you as, a, as an animal and they, they make you feel guilty that it was your fault that you were raped. Nilikuwa kasi ya kumbatiwa hata siku mwea. Nobody ever hugged me in my life. Siku pataka mapendo hata siku moja. Never received love at all. Lakini ndani ya city de la joie, the city of joy, nilipata mapendo kubwa sana. Lots of love. Nilisikia niko na furaha sana. Felt very happy, joyful. Na mpaka sasa ninaendelesha na furaha kubwa. Now I'm always very very happy. Na mpaka sasa ninasaidia wengine wa dada wenzangu wa kuwe na mwangaza. Now uh, I also help my sister to to stay in the light. Mama Christina anatuambia kila siku tujiumbie furaha. Tell us every day that we have to create joy around us. Mama Eva vile vile anatuambia anatuambia tukue na furaha. Mama tukue, Eva tukue, the same. Say the same. <laughs> Tuitafute ndani yetu. We have to look for joy inside us. Tujisikie tuko na furaha kila siku. We always have to be happy and joyful. Mpaka hivi Niko na fura sana. I have joy. I cannot even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, it's a strange place to be when you are from both cultures or two different cultures. Who are you? Do you matter? You're kind of rejected from one, rejected from the other. You're not supposed to be alive. And that's something that was very clear in this film, Christine. And it's something that you've had to, you've been challenged by all your life. And I think that you found why you have been suspended between those two cultures. And you're not alone. And there's a long road for people like you and me to bridge gaps. And it's particularly important with what's happening in the Democratic Republic of Congo because we are attached to what is happening to Jane, to everybody there, all the women there, every time we use our telephones. I never upgrade my phone because I feel sick to my stomach that there is a fresh piece of coltan in the new one. And Christine, I just w wondered if you could just talk a little bit about that and about the depression that you felt, for one, and you threw something off and you came back and the place that you adopt in the world, being from both the cultures, and the fact that that's going to be the answer to these problems. People like you. 
um, well, I don't even know from uh, where to start, but uh, I, I'm not a doctor, but uh, I think I saw, I heard, and still hear lots of horrible stories. And uh, years ago, I even felt guilty living in a nice house. I felt guilty eating. Then I stopped eating and I, I, I came with all the eating disorders. Because every time I went to the, to the hospital, and I, I will never forget the day the six months baby died in my arms, um, I was born as a Catholic. I stopped believing in God. I took the little body. I went into the cathedral when I married. And uh, I was there talking to God and asking him where, where he went, where he disappeared. And from that time, I stopped believing in God and I just believing in everything I could do by myself, and then I started, you know, like thinking, 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 and uh, I didn't. I worked for 13 years for a big institution, but they didn't understand me. So every time I saw Dr. Mukwege, he was like, "You have to take care of yourself, my family, my children. My son is here tonight. I'm so happy." But uh, also them, they saw they, they saw me like uh, like like dying. And I was lucky enough to, to, to meet this. I think Ev is an angel that was sent on earth for the others. And I, I really, uh, people who know me, I, I, I don't really talk this way to the people, but she, she changed my life and she changed the lives of so many. Now we already have more than 700 graduated. I was in Goma weeks ago with Jane and the way I saw the, 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 the evolution of our girls, the way their lives are transformed, really and truly, I think I can, I, I, I have so much strength right now, I think I can move the mountains of uh, South Kivu, of the world, because we have, we have to, we, we, we cannot look at everything that's going on and sit down. We have to do something. Look in America now. Look all over the world. Yeah. And don't think that it's far away. It will come here. And we all have to be human and to stay human. Yes. <laughs> um, I, Dr. McQuaggy, um apparently it's, it's very cushy being a doctor. It's, uh, it's a, a vocation that people aspire to. People, people are very proud of being a doctor. You, you seem to have to be not only the doctor that you are, you have to be a politician. You have to be a therapist. There are so many things that you have to be. Can you tell us about where you are situated the frustrations that you see, you are so incredibly important to Congo and to everyone because of the information that you have in your mind, the evidence that you have, that you have amassed. Can you just talk us through any, the, a, a solution in the, the bigger picture from your standpoint and the relationship of, of City of Joy and Pansy with the rest of Congo? Thank you. <coughs> I want to really thank all of you to be here tonight. It's really a strong support for what City of Joy is doing for a lot of women who are suffering without any reason. They are suffering just only because they are women. And I want really to thank you to be here <coughs> to support what Eve, Christine, and Jan are doing for women of Congo. <coughs> I believe in God, and this is maybe the, it can be a difference, but my way to see God is completely maybe different with the way of Christine and Eve, even if we love each other. <laughs> <coughs> 
And for my perspective, God is not in the sky. He's not in the cathedral. He's not in, God is in you. When I'm looking God, I'm looking God through Eve. And what Eve is doing can show me who is Eve. And God can just act through you. You can refuse to do it. It's your choice. But if you accept it, whatever you believe in, I can say God is acting in Eve. And when Eve came to Bukavu, I was at the point just to give up. I could not go on. It was so terrible. And I just get this feeling that myself, I was not able even to help women coming to the hospital. When I decided to be a medical doctor, it was only just because of the pain I saw with a child, with my father, who was a, a pastor. But when I became a doctor, I saw how women were suffering in giving life. And Congo is one of the where maternal mortality is very, very high. Women are coming to the hospital not to give, as Jen gave her, her testimony. This is a normal life in Congo. And women have impression that if I'm alive, it's only I'm lucky. But they could not die in giving life. So I decided to be an OBGYN to support women. But after 15 years, all my life changed. Because then I faced this terrible thing mm. to see women coming to the hospital completely destroyed mm. by men. And uh, after six years, I was at the point that nothing, I was not able even to do my surgery because I become myself part of this suffering. And as I, I said in the film, when I was here in New York, I get the interview with Eve, and I just, it was first for me for the first time that someone could talk about vagina openly. <laughs> and really, Definitely it, do that. It, it was a terrible situation for me, because when I was uh, just trying to talk about vagina, everyone was just like this. And this was the first time that someone was talking about vagina openly. So I feel that now, really, I have a strong support. I invite, I invite her in Congo. Mm -hmm. I was not sure that she will come. Mm -hmm. And when she came, we just make a team, talking about vagina openly. <laughs> and really, this was the beginning of my healing. Yeah. Vagina. Vagina. And I just want to say one other thing. The Congo is, is still very insecure. Dr. McGuege's security, Christine's security, and all the women we work with security is threatened. The UN is moving out and leaving people abandoned there. I urge you all to write to the UN, to do everything in your power. Not only do people on this panel, these extraordinary people have to fight to keep people alive, to keep their hearts going, to give them therapy, but now they have to fight to make sure they don't die themselves and the girls don't die. And the UN is here to protect human rights and protect human right workers. So please do everything you can to make these people safe in the Congo. Vday.org slash City of Joy. I just want to say there's tons of things you can do to help support us. Um, we need funds all the time. We have amazing supporters here tonight. I can't list them all, but please go to our website, support our efforts. And I just want to say, if we've learned anything in the last three heartbreaking days in this country, if we've learned anything from this film, 
Now is the time to rise to our deepest selves and love, 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 and refuse the fascist, refuse the bigot, refuse the hate. Thank you.